Welcome, everyone. I uh, hope you had a great lunch. Um, our goal is to defeat the lunch dip and talk about network policies the not so hard way um, with Cilium, why it's different, uh, and how you can effectively secure your workloads in your clusters. Today with me is Tracy Holm, so I'd like to introduce Tracy. She's going to run the actual lab with you guys. I'm going to first start with the presentation. My name is Raymond Dion. I'm from ISO Valent. I'm a solutions architect, and I'm here today to talk about network policies. So the agenda, first we'll talk about Cilium and eBPF as an introduction. Um, talk about security and observability, what features Cilium has for you to secure your workloads, to observe your workloads. Then a little bit about strategies for designing and working with network policies, after which we have a short demo using Hubble UI as well, after which we will dive into the lab with Tracy, and we want you to also do the lab alongside with us. And for that purpose, I would like you to ask already to go to isovalent.com forward slash labs, and then start the getting started with Cilium OSS labs. It takes a few minutes for the labs to be actually be created. It's an actual lab running on kind-based clusters. For that to be proficient with a group, it makes sense for people to already start it. Just wait to continue before Tracy will start the lab with you. Okay, back to the presentation. Cool, Cilium and eBPF, introduction. So we're from Isovalent. We're the originators from Cilium. We invented Cilium and donated it to the community. And Cilium is widely used amongst multiple different environments for different use cases among security. Cilium is based on eBPF, and eBPF is a technology, what we like to say is that it's a technology similar to JavaScript uh, to the browser. Cilium, or eBPF, is to the kernel, and it makes the kernel programmable in a very efficient way without actually changing the kernel. And it's very powerful because it can run on kernel events. So anything, a process opening a socket or a network device sending a packet, those are kernel events where we can attach eBPF programs on. Um, and that's very powerful because we can do things with that. We can expose metrics, we can see identities, we can observe flows as we will show today. Cilium is built on eBPF. And you don't have to be an eBPF engineer to use Cilium, because Cilium abstracts that complex technology for you. Um, it will automatically program the required eBPF programs depending on what you configure. And it provides a software-defined networking solution for the cloud-native age, including external workloads. And obviously, in Kubernetes environments, it takes care of identities instead of IPs. Cilium has a lot of functionalities and features, of which of networking, observabilities with Hubble, which we'll show and demonstrate today as well. Um, we've introduced a service mesh solution, which is a sidecar-less implementation powered with eBPF to accelerate the service mesh capabilities to do layer sef seven path based routing, providing ingress out of, out of the box without using a sidecar, which three to four times improves latency and performance, and obviously removes um, 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 resources you may need for running sidecars in your clusters. So let's talk about security with Cilium. Cilium provides an identity-based solution. In Kubernetes clusters, IPs come and go. They are ephemeral, such as with the workloads. What Cilium does is for each unique set of labels attached to your workloads, think about tier front end, application Nginx, that you, you, unique set of labels will result in an identity. And Cilium uses this identity to attach this identity using eBPF to the actual IP packet. And we're able to also observe and identify ident that identity, for example, on the destination. So a front end reaching out to a back end means that the front end gets that identity attached. And the backend will be able to inspect that identity when tra traffic goes inbound. And depending on the network policies you configure, it allows or denies that traffic. Furthermore, Cilium provides API aware authorization. And what that means is that not only layer three on IPs or lay and or layer four on ports, we also provide layer seven 
rules and capabilities to be able to filter HTTP requests on specific calls, methods, on specific paths. And this is an example of a Cilium network policy where we have a uh, HTTP aware rule for a namespace demo where we apply this rule to an application called server, match labels app equals server, and then have a rule ingress from endpoints clients to port 80, and then notice the rules HTTP method get on the path forward slash. So this is a rule example where we only allow this specific method on this specific path and nothing else. In the lab, you will see there are some, some examples of this as well. Another example is a Cassandra Cilium network policy. So besides HTTP, we also support Cassandra to only allow a specific uh, query action on a specific table. We can also filter on Kafka topics or gRPC calls, amongst others. Furthermore, what's very powerful is the Cilium network policies, which are DNS aware which means that, for example, you're running um, storage workloads on S3 buckets. As you may know, IPs of those buckets change all the time, so securing those resources is hard to track. Using fully qualified domain names, however, you can filter traffic to a specific bucket. And that means that using DNS-aware Cilium network policies, you can secure access to a given fully qualified domain name. How it works is that one front end does a query for, uh, for a specific domain. We're able to intercept that and based on that, using eBPF, allow or deny that specific traffic. Besides layer three, layer, layer three matching capabilities, we're also able to match on things like cloud providers labels, such as instance labels, subnet, subnet names, subnet tags, or other security group names as well. And we also have logical identities, things like world or local host, or remote host, ingress and such, which are also useful in some specific use cases working with Cilium network policies. Cilium network policies are very powerful, but without the right observability tools, you're still lost applying a specific configuration of security on your workloads. Cilium, uh, uh, we, sorry, <laughs> Hubble, you, Hubble is our um, observability solution uh, on top of Cilium, and we provide a UI which shows a surface dependency map, um, allows you to see the flows between surfaces uh, on protocol level, depending on the policies you set. You can even see flows for layer seven uh, uh, rules as well. For more advanced, uh, use cases, troubleshooting, or, or inspection, we also support a CLI, which allows you to also do extensive filtering and also be able to allow uh, output to JSON. And the Hubble metrics component is everything related to getting metrics out of Cilium and Hubble and export them through Prometheus to Gravana, for example, or in advanced use cases, also to seam platforms to get alerts, for example, in Splunk on security incidents. This is how the CLI looks like. I'm not going to talk a lot about this because you will also discover this in the lab. But what you will see and what's important to notice is that we're able to identify um, the HTTP calls, the fully qualified domain names being accessed, and also the identities being attached to those workloads. This is a quick example of a service map where we can see the dependencies of services, the, the communication between services, and also note that in some examples, for example, the core API, we can see the specific URLs and specific methods being used to reach that service. And this provides you the tools to get started with securing your workloads without breaking your applications. This is an example of Hubble metrics. If we have time today, I have also an example of policy verdict metrics. So using Grafana, we're also able to track policy verdicts, things like allowed or denied, which should match your policies where you can see how many uh, policies are actually matching and also what kind of domains are being reached out. So working with Cilium network policies or network policies in general can be a very big challenge. Um, you don't want to be in the way of your developers. But on the other side, you have requirements that you need to secure your applications. 
Um, if you deploy a deny all policy, it's most likely to become very difficult and hard to, for each independent service and application to introduce a Cilium network policy and to troubleshoot that. You also need to keep them up to date. You need to know when an application changes, what has actually changed and, and what you need to do to change your Cilium network policy. And how do you prove that and what are the risks? So our goal of today is also to talk a bit more about some mechanisms to understand or approach this challenge and to be effectively secure workloads. And I want to talk about four risks and of risks exposure, obviously from the internet where you're exposing services, that's a huge risk. From internal networks, if you just expose from any destination, that can be a risk, people accessing data which they are not allowed to. If we look at uh, intra-cluster or between cluster, we have lateral movement risk or egress risk for workloads reaching resources in the external network, for example, a physical database. And obviously, things like reaching back to internet as well. You want to avoid people being able to open, open a reverse shell, for example. So the goal is to reduce unused access, um, which creates exposure without being required for the application to work. So we also want to reduce the blast radius, right? So if a pod gets compromised, it can uh, expose or move on to pods in its same namespace, but even beyond namespaces or beyond clusters. So we also want to limit the blast radius. So there are different ways you can do it. For example, the deny all is, is very effective, but will be very hard to work with. So what we try to work with our customers is to get a starting policy which is good enough reducing risks, um, only exposing to get started, for example, pods between a, for within a given namespace, for pods being able to reach out to each other to allow service-to-service -service communication within a given namespace, but deny ingress and egress from a namespace, except things, for example, Prometheus, which needs to monitor workloads, and obviously kubeDNS being used to resolve uh, DNS requests. And then you can basically start with a coarse grained per namespace policy where using Hubble you can start with opening ports to um, um, observe traffic and then move, move on to slowly introducing more specific firewall rules for, for your workloads. And the goal is then to move to a fine grained namespace policy where you don't only allow on a specific IP, IP and port, but even better on a specific fully qualified domain name and only allow an or expose a service through a load balance on a given port as such. And I will show and demonstrate this a bit in a demo as well. Obviously, Cilium can be very powerful in GitOps kind of operation, DevOps, security DevOps operations using GitHub and GitLab integration, uh, using Argo or Flux to basically automate um, PRs from Cilium network policies which have, for example, any as a destination or 000 forward slash zero and automatically uh, deny the PR for it to be changed to a more specific DNS. So with that, um, I'm going to move to a short demo as an introduction to the actual lab. So the overview is that we have deployed a namespace with a starting network policy which allows traffic from that namespace. And I'm slowly going to use Hubble, or I'm going to use Hubble to slowly introduce more specific Cilium network policies to secure that namespace and eventually remove the allow all rule to have that specific policy. All right, let's hope the demo gods are with us. I hope everyone can see this in the back, please let me know if it's big enough. A little bit more? Okay, cool, give me a second. So I've set up a, a demo cluster on GKE, um, installing Cilium 1.12, also with Hubble. So I will demonstrate the application. So this is a simple example. We see we've deployed this namespace called my app. We have a simple client server uh, application running. And we can see traffic from the client to the server on port 80, most likely HTTP, but we don't see it yet. Uh, and 
TCP traffic. And we see that the client is also reaching out to some kind of destinations outside the cluster, perhaps even on the internet. So we want to know more. Looking on the flows, the live flows, we can see it's actually public IPs. So we need to investigate that a bit. So to do that, we need to have some specific policies in place. Is this big enough as well for the audience? Good. Nice. Sorry. There we go. Cool, cool. So for starters, we want to see the external access. So what I want to do, introduce is that I'm going to introduce a Cilium network policy which is going to inspect that DNS traffic from that client. So what I do, I select all endpoints using this and then specify egress to allow access to cube system to port 53. But I also specifically have a rules section which specifically matches for DNS and using this wildcard I'm able to allow DNS requests but I'll also see um, um, the FQDNs being reached out to, so I can take further action based on that. So let's apply this policy. So it's the DNS.yaml. I've applied it. Good. Quick check of if I'm still in the same namespace. I'm not actually. <laughs> Good, I checked that. Um, let me first. Change namespace. All right. All right, so I'm, apply, I'm applying this policy. Now we already can see that Cilium detects or Hubble detects automatically that we're now reaching out to isovalent.com and Cilium.io. So we have better information what this client is trying to reach out to. So with this information, you can make a more specific um, informed decision on how to secure the specific workloads. On the client side, we do see that the client is not only reaching out to isovalent and Cilium, but also to the server on port 80. So with this information, I'm now going to apply this Cilium network policy, which is applied to the client. Note this ingress part using this. I'll deny everything ingress for this specific endpoint. And then egress, I allow uh, the server to, uh, sorry, I allow egress connectivity to the server on port 80. And I also need obviously to allow kube API access. And now I can actually add the two for loop qualified domain names piece where I only allow these two domains on port 443. So apply this. So this won't change anything in Hubble, but I've applied this policy. And next is the server part. I want to secure ingress to the server. And considering time, I will start with um, applying a policy on the server, also explicitly deny egress connectivity, but allow ingress from the client to port 80. So again, this won't change anything here. And now I've applied a client rule, a server rule, a DNS rule, which should mean that I also have um, secured all workloads. So what I can now do is remove the two broadly specified allow all rule, which I applied for the application to function. And if I did things correctly, I should not see any drops. And this means that now the client application is working, the server application is working, and it is allowed to access external resources. But let's say we have another application being introduced. So let me quickly go through this and then. So let's say there's another namespace, another client application wanting to reach out to the server application. Um, and it's being introduced, but um, we can now see this another app tries to 
reach to the server, but it's not able to reach. We see drops and we can click on Hubble UI to zoom in on this another app workload. And you see drops and forward. You may wonder why is that? Well, it's because the another app doesn't have any policies applied to it yet. So egress from that app is allowed, but ingress on the server is obviously denied because we didn't allow that specific destination. So let's suppose this is required, so we need to allow this. That means that we need to go back to um, the policies directory, where I've stored them. So let's allow, we know this endpoint, we, we allow this another app to reach from the namespace another app to port 80. And we also know, we've been informed that they are running HTTP um, for access. So we also allow that only HTTP on layer seven is allowed. So we're updating the server policy. And now we can check in Hubble what this means. I think the drops are already gone. Yep, everything is being allowed. And we also see, we now also have the layer seven visibility because we can see that we, um, this client, another app client is reaching on, does a get call on the default path. Okay, so that concludes the demo, uh, a way for securing your workloads. And from here, I will hand over to Tracy to go through the lab with you so you get more hands-on experience yourself um, with a Star Wars-based example, securing that workload. Tracy, here you go. Thank you. So if you haven't done that already, go to isovalent.com forward slash labs to start the getting started on the OSS lab. Um, we also have Duffy, if you have an issue. <laughs> Duffy's happy to help as well. Um, <laughs> if you run into an issue in the lab, let us know. Um, and we can support you. I'll come to you to help you as well. For those of you that can't see Duffy's face, he was just as surprised as, as I was to hear that one. Um, so, let's see. Quick question. Hold on just a second. Yo. Yeah. All right. Has anyone here not ever touched psyllium? Like, raise your hand. Oh, this is gonna be good. Okay. Has anyone in here never used instruct? before. Okay, so first things first, Ray told you all about the URL when we first started. If you hit launch when he first started talking, go back out and go back in. What Instruct will do is if when you get to a certain time limit, it will kick you out, and I don't want that to happen to you all while you're in the middle of the lab. The URL, again, is isovalent.com forward slash labs. And the very first one on the left side of the grid is getting started with Cilium OSS. Cool. This is not a terribly long lab. Um, so if you, if you do have questions while I'm going through, Ray is still mic'd up. He can help Duffy here with the amazing black hat that he is known for will also help. Ah, you want to see it, see it. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Let's see what I can do. I never use this app, but it might come in handy this time. That's not helping. Oh, that's because I'm not in the font. <laughs> Y'all saw nothing. That's the URL. 
How many advocates does it take to change the font size on something? Can everyone see it now? Yes, no? Yes, okay. All right, this is a getting started with Cilium Lab, as you all well know. I will read the majority of this just in case. I don't know if English is everyone's first language, so therefore, you, those of you that are watching, hopefully you can understand me. The other thing is I am a fan of typing things out. So if you've never used Instruct before, when we get to the first page, I'm going to show you something to make sure you don't miss any of the commands that's, that are on the right side of the page. So ensuring security on Kubernetes, um, how do you enforce policies, troubleshoot the network, and stay secure with minimal effort? A new approach is needed. You get to talk about Cilium today. I'm not gonna go through this, however. Ray just told you all about this. Uh, that would be redundant. You are free to review that while my environment is creating, because that's gonna take about a minute or two. Yeah, Ray, you, you covered all this, thank you. <laughs> and you all have already met Hubble. So hopefully you're getting into the labs while this is happening. Oh yeah, so you will also have quizzes. I'm gonna need you all to yell out an answer or a letter or something to make sure that I'm, I'm getting green before we go through. So just know that I will stop and ask. And yeah, now we just have to wait. So sorry about that. I would sing background music, but I'm horrible at that. Ray, I think you jinxed my environment setup. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's creating, it's just taking a minute. That's, that's very helpful, thank you. So maybe it's just me. <clears throat> there we go, all right, so start. Whew, sorry about that, thank you all for being patient. I didn't have any jokes ready, I apologize. Um, so for those of you that never use Instruct, if you look on the right side where you see the kind cluster, you'll notice there are drop down arrows for everything. If you want to work ahead, absolutely fine. However, make sure that you scroll down because some of the text will hide things that you need to expand before you can move on. Got it? Yes? Cool. Yes? Okay, good. Nods. All right. So we're running a kind Kubernetes cluster, and on top of that, we're running Cilium. So while the kind cluster is finishing, it's start, let's look at the config. I'm not typing that out. <laughs> and that is too small for those of you that are trying to see that. Let's do this. Is that better or worse? Better? Okay. A lot better. Yeah. All right. So in the nodes section, you can see that the cluster consists of three nodes. One control plane node, and that's running the, the Kate's control plane, and two worker nodes that we'll use to deploy the applications. In the networking section of the config file, the default CNI has been disabled, so the cluster won't have any pod network when it starts. Instead, Cilium is being deployed to the cluster pr to provide this functionality, so Cilium will be your CNI. So let's see if the kind cluster is ready. Hopefully it doesn't take as long as the lab did to start up. Uh, and we'll make sure that the cluster's running properly. So we're gonna list those nodes. Control V does work in this for pasting. You can also just copy the command whenever you see the code. The um, copy button should pop up so you can copy it that way if you'd like. All right, so you see all three of the nodes appear. So you see those on the screen. All are marked not ready. That's normal. The CNI is disabled. And after this page, we're going to install uh, Cilium. So if you don't see all the nodes, uh, they might still be joining the cluster. And hey, since we have a cluster, let's go install Cilium. All 
All right, so what we'll be using, if you've ever, if you've never worked through one of our getting started guides in the docs, there are a couple of ways to get to this point. Uh, there's actually a, a brew command to install Selenium, um, or at least get the agent there, um, or also like a curl command. So that's what's already been done in the background. After that step is where we're at. So Selenium CLI tool is provided to install and check the status of Selenium in the cluster so we can know what's going on. Um, but it'll also, it helps us install and update Cilium, but you can also like enable Hubble and cluster mesh from the CLI. So let's go do some of that. And you are literally typing Cilium install. That's gonna take about 30, 45 seconds to get done. Um, and it will let you know that it's installed and ready. After that, we can check the status to make sure that everything is, is nice and healthy and, and happy. Everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay, cool. Also, if there are any terms you don't understand, again, I have very, very nice people in here, including some that probably have on shirts that are hiding and don't want to be called on, in case you need help for definitions or anything like that. <laughs> I honestly think Cillium's mad at me, Ray. The labs don't like me anymore. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I have to fuss. Okay. It'll even tell you what to type to, to view the installation help. So I'll just follow the instructions from the command line. So let's do Cilium status and see what's going on. All right. So the very first two things you see are that Cilium is in OK. And operator's doing OK. We haven't enabled Hubble and we haven't enabled cluster mesh. So those are going to show as disabled. So now that we're functional, let's go deploy the demo app. I love Instruct. It tells me, well done. <laughs> Thank you, Instruct. Ah, quiz number one. The Cilium CLI allows us to, and we can have multiple answers if needed. So which one should I click first? Top one? All right. Anything else? Check the Cilium status. Is that what somebody said? Middle one? OK. Anything else? No? All right, let's see what happens. Gold star. Thank you so much. If you don't already know, we're fans of Star Wars here at Isofaley. <laughs> so everything going forward, if you're a Trekkie, I apologize in advance. Uh, so <laughs> to learn how to use and enforce policies with Cilium, we have prepared a demo example. Uh, we're going to have three microservice applications. That's going to be the Death Star, a TIE Fighter, and an X-Wing. Death Star service is, it runs the HTTP web service on port 80. That's exposed as a Kate service to load balance request the Death Star across two pod replicas. The Death Star service provides landing services to the Empire spaceships so that they can request a landing port. The TIE Fighter pod represents a landing request client service on a typical Empire ship. X-Wing represents a similar service on an Alliance ship. And with this setup, we can test different security policies for access control to Death Star landing services. It's just like your house. You don't want people going in and out of your house that, don't, that shouldn't have a key, right? It's basically what we're doing, just the Star Wars version. All right, so let's check to make sure that all the components have been properly deployed. Let me move this over. So you all can see some of this. There we go. Uh, it may take a few seconds to display the results. You all are very patient and have been, so I don't think that's going to be an issue. All right, Selim successfully rolled out. Let's deploy the demo app. So you'll know which is what is what because of the labels. So the Death Star is going to be the Empire org, and it's going to be a Death Star class. The Imperial TIE Fighter is also in the same org. So it's an Empire organization, and it's going to be a different class. It's TIE Fighter. And then the X-Wing is the Alliance organization. And the class, of course, is X-Wing. So the deployment will also have a Death Star service, what we just talked about. And that's going to load balance all the traffic to all of the pods 
with the label org equals empire and Death Star class. So let's install everything. There's a, a manifest in the background, YAML. Um, and we are going to install. So all of our objects are, in, are created. Let's see that everything's actually deployed the way that it should be. I can't type. See, this is why I don't type stuff. I bet if I copy it, it works. Well, that was just rude. There we go. All right, so at this point, it's already saying running. Uh, but each pod will go through several states until it reaches running at the point that pod is ready. So let's try it again. Well, if you need to, try it again until you see that everything has a running status. Each pod will also be represented, represented in Cilium as an endpoint. So we want to see a list of all the endpoints that are managed by Cilium. The Cilium endpoint, or CEP, CEP, resource can also be used. I will tell you now, I tried to manually type it and it did not work earlier, so you might want to copy and paste this one. And I promise I actually typed it correctly. And it did that earlier. <laughs> hmm? Yeah. It does work the second time? Thank You're you. Because right. yeah. that happened to me earlier and I was like, who hates me? <laughs> All right, let's try it again. I had the same this morning, yeah. Okay. I think uh, there's a small delay. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right, so as you can see, we've got our demo app installed. And so let's go check onto our first test. Yeah, before you do that, notice the identities as well, right? So you can see um, the Dev Star have similar labels because it's two pods. So they have the same identity being allocated to the Dev Star. So that's under the hoof, Cilium providing a unique identity for similar workloads. So with this command, you can actually point and troubleshoot that. Did you all hear him over on that side? Kind of? OK, cool. All right, so let's go launch our first test. All right, so let's talk about Death Star access. From the perspective of the Death Star service, only the ships with the label org equals empire or anything that's an empire org are allowed to connect and request a landing. But we don't have any rules enforced, so like what'll happen if not only the TIE fighter but also the X-Wing request landing? So let's find out. So instead of actually running the full con connectivity test, we're gonna be using um, curl to execute some API calls. So let's see if we can land our TIE fighter on the Death Star by running the following command. Ship landed. All right, so the command above get, lets us get a shell on the TIE fighter pod and run an HTTP post request to the Death Star service to request landing. The command should work because the TIE fighter and the Death Star are all on the same side of, you know, the war. Also known as the bad guys, which I hate because I'm a Boba Fett person, but anyway. Um, now test if we can land the X-Wing, the good guys. What do you all think is gonna happen? It's gonna work, all right, so let's see. And you are correct. So that's good for the rebels because they can get where they technically shouldn't be. Um, but unfettered access to the Death Star is not great for them. So apparently a security policy is missing. All right, so let's, here's a brief blurb about identities in cloud native. IP addresses are no longer relevant for cloud native workloads because security policies need something else. They just do. Um, Cilium provides this, Cilium uses the labels assigned to the pods to define the security policies. We're gonna start with a basic policy restricting the Death Star landing requests to only the ships that have the label or equals Empire. This should block, or this blocks, any ships without the label to even connect to the Death Star service. It's a simple policy that, well, I'm not even gonna say simple policy. It's a policy that filters only on network layer three, so that's the IP protocol, and network layer four, which is a TCP protocol. So it's often referred to as an L3, L4 
network security policy. And so this is what it, it looks like it, as a graphic. So let's go do some more stuff. All right, so the first thing first, we're gonna start with that policy to restrict Death Star landing requests to the ships that only have the label org equals empire. Before we start changing policies right away, let's think about what that looks like, or should look like, I should say. I'm gonna expand this just a little bit. Come on, mouse. You like me today, right? There we go. So we need to match on empire ships only. So we, that label is what we need to match on. And that's what that would look like. Match labels or empire class Death Star. We also have to make sure that ingress from the endpoints with the label empire are also allowed to port 80 for protocol TCP. We see that in the image. So while this example is relatively simple, operators sometimes find it difficult to understand and to build network policies. Um, and Silium has a solution for this. So if you look at the top where you see terminal, right next to that, you will see the network policy editor. What I will say is if you are on something that has a size, a MacBook Air size screen, you are going to need to collapse right here. You're gonna use that to collapse so you can actually see the visualization or else it won't show up. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> Thought something was wrong earlier. So I'm going to go through this blurb first and then just show you what the, the Netpaw um, editor looks like. Um, so you can all click on that while I'm reading through this. So click on it to see a visual and interactive representation of your policy and change some of the values if you wanna play around and better understand what the policy is doing. And I'm gonna be completely honest with you, networking has never been my forte. I used to cry for Cisco stuff. Like it just hasn't. Break fix is my thing. The one thing I did like when I started using Cilium or starting learning Cilium, because honestly I'm still learning, is this editor that you all are looking at because it was easier for me to follow along with what everything was going on. Some people are, are visual and I just happen to be one of those people. Um, so the central part of the diagram represents the network policy selector and then each side will show respectively which ingress and egress are allowed for the workload. So you basically wanna verify that your current selector which are the org equals empire, class equals death star, are only allowed ingress traffic from pods labeled as org equals empire. And that's what that would look like. Um, you can also check the corresponding network policy manifest in the editor below. And note, you can either use the Cilium network policy or you can use the Kubernetes network policy. The other thing is if you're ever at home and you want to use something like this without having to spend a lot of things up, we do have editor.cilium.io and I'm gonna click on that before I actually show you the one in Instruct because it's very, very easy to use and I talk about it all the time. So you'll get this most times whenever you get on here. But this is what this looks like. I'm not sure you would wanna do, try to do it from a mobile device, but outside of that, it's very, very helpful and whenever you have the policy you want, you can actually download it or just copy and paste it into your YAML file. All right, so this is what it looks like on the tutorial side. This is basically the same thing I just showed you. It just doesn't have anything preloaded. And that's that. All right, so let's enforce the policy and we're gonna do that actually using the terminal. So you might wanna go back to the terminal tab and we can apply the pre-configured network policy with the values that we just talked about for the demo system. So let's copy and paste that. It'll let you know that it was created and let's try to land the Empire TIE Fighter again to the Death Star, which should still, which should still work. Ship is landed. Now, if you try to request a landing with your X-Wing, however, you should see that it's gonna hang, like nothing at all should happen at this point. And if we still got ships landing, that means I probably copied and pasted something incorrectly. And as you see, nothing is happen happening. So that means that our rule actually did what it was supposed to do. To get out of that, control C. So we blocked the access to the Death Star from an X-Wing 
So let's see if we can make it a bit more fine grained. Those of you that work in government, separation of duties. That's basically what we're about to do or any other place similar. All right, so it was sufficient to give either the TIE Fighter X-Wing full access to Death Star's API or no access at all. But are you absolutely sure that you can trust all of the TIE Fighter pilots of the entire empire? You're not, because you don't know all of them. And if you do, we got bigger problems. Uh, we must provide the strongest security, so enforce least privilege, uh, between microservices. And each service that calls the Death Star's API should be limited to making only the set of HTTP requests it requires for legitimate uh, operation. So we just need to filter the actual HTTP request. And that's what this will look like. So let's go do that. All right, so think about this. The Death Star service exposes some maintenance APIs which should not be called by random Empire ships. To see why those APIs are sensitive, we're gonna run this cube cuddle Yes, cuddle. <laughs> Say it again. We're gonna run this cute cuddle. Don't shake your head at me, Tuffy. <laughs> um, command. And the very first thing you see is there's a panic because the Death Star exploded. This is why some things should not be touched by everyone. All right, so this is an illustrative example and yeah, it's kind of dramatic, but unauthorized access such as above can have adverse security repercussions. Things can blow up. Uh, so we need to enforce some policies on the HTTP layer, which is layer seven, to limit what exact APIs the TIE Fighter is allowed to call and which ones they aren't. So we're gonna extend the existing policy with an HTTP rule that looks like this. And that should restrict the API access to only the landing path and thus prevent users from accessing the exhaust port, which is why we had something blow up a little while ago. So again, we're gonna go back to the network policy tab and it should be pre-filled. I'm, I'm just gonna show the image because you all know how to get there at this point. Um, but you wanna verify that the policy will filter access to the Death Star by its path. All right, so now let's enforce it. So we're back in the terminal and we are going to apply the updated policy. Hey, 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 I said apply. Oh, now you're just being mean. Hold on, please. There we go. What am I, I copied a paste, a copied a blank space. That's what I did. Apologies, let me get that. There we go. There we go. It will let you know that's configured. And then we're gonna run the same test that we ran at the beginning. And now you see access is denied, which is what we wanted. So with L7 security policies, we're able to restrict the access only to the required API resources on Death Star. And that, may we, that way we've implemented a least privilege uh, security approach for the communication between the microservices. And I think we're about to have another quiz. <laughs> Are we? I think. Yes. All right, you all got me an A last time. Let's see what happens this time. All right. What's the first one I need to check? Network policies can block or allow traffic between pods. Yes or no? All right. L304 network policies can filter HTTP requests. Okay, we got some yeps and a yeses. L7 network policies can filter on HTTP paths. Yes. yes? Okay. And the last one is Cilium supports standard Kubernetes network policies. All right, I got, let, let's see what we got. They could have just given us an all of the above, but you know. Ah, one of these is wrong. The second one? All right, let's try taking out the second one. You get a gold star. Thank you so much. Let's move on to the next part. We're almost through. Actually, I think we are through. So we saved the Death Star and we made the empire a safe place. And I think, you know what? We all deserve a gold star for that. <laughs> and some good coffee. Uh, so let's, let me hit this, because I want to show you something. So if you want to know more about Cilium, and I think Ray has one more slide that he wanted to show you all for Hubble, which I really think is a really good uh, UI. Um, if you go to the Cilium website, 
It'll give you a breakdown of what Cilium is. Um, it's gonna give you a link to our Slack. Our Slack is huge, um, but everyone in there is exceptionally helpful, especially to beginners. I still ask beginner questions all the time. Um, but the other thing is if you wanna contribute, if you wanna see the documentation, or if you wanna know how to install on K, like K3S, for example, or like I use Rancher Desktop, it also has instructions to do that also. So please go check it out. Um, and if you have any questions, you are free to tweet me. And I'm gonna let Ray come back up. Thank you. Thank you. And as a bonus, anyone completing the challenge, um, we are working on some badges, the Credly digital badges. So as soon as they become available, you will award that badge for this lab as well. But be patient with us. We need some work to do there to make it work. Um, so yeah, thank you, Tracy. Thank you for running the lab. I hope you all liked it. Uh, please provide feedback to us. If you want to know more, there are, I think, already 10 labs we provide, um, both open source and enterprise labs on different topics, also cluster mesh, egress gateway, things like uh, BGP and advanced networking. So let me plug in my screen. <laughs> No, no, it's fine. So besides Slack, um, we have on this conference two booths. We have a Cilium booth, we have an isovalent booth. Um, feel free to, to visit us. Um, if you want to know more about eBPF, we provide um, the, cap the option or the opportunity, I would say, to get the What is eBPF book signed by Liz. And we also have Natalia, who has the security uh, advanced eBPF book. So if you want to know really more about that technology, how it actually works, I recommend to visit it as, as, as us at the booth and even get it signed by Liz. Um, for enterprise solutions, go to isovalent.com um, to know more about that. And that concludes this session. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you, Duffy, for helping out. I uh, hope you liked it. Enjoy KubeCon and uh, thanks for joining. Good, good point. <laughs> no questions? Happy to ask, answer questions? No? All right. Okay. Oh, wait, you got one? Can you show Hubble? Oh, so, he so. wanted to see Hubble. Hubble, yeah. This is Hubble UI. Um, uh, no, did, did, did I share that or did you join a bit later? <laughs> is there something specific you want to see? Oh wait, did you want to see the CLI or did you want to see the UI? Uh, UI. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, so to, to, to give it a bit more, so on the left, here on the top, you can select namespaces to monitor. So I can also monitor Cube system if I like. Um, but let's go back to the app example. So basically the top section allows you to filter either by selecting uh, components and services or uh, entering a filter, you can filter on verdicts, dropped forwarded and such. Um, the top section shows live flows and if you click on a specific surface, it will focus the view for that given surface and it will focus all the flows as well, ingress and egress from that given surface. Does that help? Yeah. Good, welcome, oh. another question. It's the actual traffic. Uh, does it matter if it's allowed or denied? We can already, using eBPF, observe flows between them, between surfaces. So if I would have a deny policy or not allowing specific traffic, you would see drops uh, uh, continuing in the flows um, appearing. And if it's allowed, it will just forward and show it as well. You have to have traffic, yeah, that's, that's the case. We, yeah, you, you have to have traffic to have uh, Hubble observe that traffic. Thank you. Welcome. Any other question? Yes, please. Um, so I use Istio for data 
I'm no, no, not on 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 this layer for J J JWT. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So with sidecar, you mean you or service mesh, you mean? Yeah. yeah. So the, so authorization out, authentication is coming in Cilium 1.13. So that's a roadmap uh, implementation. Any other question? Cool. Thank you for again for joining us. Enjoy your day.